Hi, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to take you through the steps of making these folded ribbon ornaments. things I'm going to show is the list of supplies. First we're going to start with your foam ball. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's the styrofoam you want or the um, what they call a smooth one. Um, I'm actually going to see if this one's any better this time around. And the size also kind of doesn't matter. This is the smallest that I've gone and that's your 2.9. Um, if you go any smaller you won't be able to get very many colors in there. And I also didn't really like going bigger because it's just kind of too big on the tree usually. Um, so this is the size that I normally go with, but you can play around with it. The next thing will be your ribbons. Colors are all totally up to you. I've used all sorts of patterns. I, I personally like the metallics. They are shiny and on trees with lights, it's really pretty but you can really honestly do almost anything. I've also done patterns for kids. Um, I had Disney Princess one year. And the one thing though is to get the one and a half inch size. It folds pr the best. Um, I'll show you with the scrapped one. Cause eventually we'll, you go like this. And that's how you, you're you going to be doing the folded. And this just seems to work the best for me. Uh, it also doesn't matter if it is wired or not. If it's not wired, you just use a little iron, which I use my little quilting iron on a board. If you get the wired, you can skip the iron step because when you do the fold, It stays down. Now, I guess you could technically skip the iron because you are pinning it in place, but it just seems to like have a bubble for me, and I hate that part. I like the look of it when it's nice and smooth when you lay it down. So I actually like it using the wire because it skips that stage, but there's not always a lot of wired ones uh, when you're looking for your patterns or colors that you like. When choosing your ribbon though, I found that only usually two to three colors of ribbon are, in, are gonna be enough. The max usually is four. Even with um, your spacing being really tight, again, this size just doesn't allow for a ton of the quilting. Uh, so that's just my experience. Again, it's something you can play with. You will need also a thinner ribbon to make your tie, um, you can use this one, uh, the um, or the next one up. Like I think that's a half inch. I just wouldn't go too wide because this is what you're going to be using to hang it on the branch. Other things needed are um, tiny little pins. I've used both the applique ones, um, which are these itty bitty bitty ones, or. This other size, and I'll show you comparison. I don't know if you guys, they're so they're very small, um, but they work really well. You can even use um, regular straight pin size. I just found that I do like these ones, and this has all been experimentation. I just noticed with the bigger straight size, sometimes you are actually ending up poking into each other. Um, it's, I had noticed that, whereas I never noticed that with these. This just needs to be long enough to get a good grip. And sometimes these little, little ones don't have enough. So it's always been a playing with it a little bit. I also use some T-pins to attach the ribbon, 
that holds it onto the tree. It just gives a little extra um, grip. So those are the pins. And then the last thing, and these are just decorative things. Again, things that I've played with. I sometimes will get head pins because they have the decorative tips just to add a little more sparkle, a little whatever in the very center of the ornament. Again, you don't need these, it's up to you. I've also used where I had a um, alphabet letter for the person I was making it for that I strung on something like this to go across the middle. It's all kind of what you wanna to do to for the middle of your ornament. I've also had it where I've put down fabric, again, that Disney princess one, put down fabric to cover the middle so that it was themed. And before I forget your basic scissors, um, I use a slide ruler, but any type of ruler that you can see, um, a Sharpie and a hair tie. And I'll get to like the hair tie and Sharpie and stuff later. And little Miss Baca, she's not needed, but she decided she wanted to help. So I like to do the prep work first. So I cut out all the ribbons that I'm gonna need. Again, you only need about three to, to four colorways on each half. On one half, you're gonna need four of one color, so then the other half's another four. So that's eight of each color. So, so I figured I'd just show you guys. So each piece, when you fold it and fold it, you're gonna make little triangles. So I already knew from previous that that's about three inches. And then I, this is a scrap one. I just kind of use it as my guide. Now, if you are very OCD about it and like to have yours perfect, go ahead and use a slide ruler. I am not, and the bottoms of these get covered anyway, so using a guide is close enough for me. So I am cutting eight of each colorway here. So I had to sacrifice a few of the leftover scraps to the kitty, but it's keeping her off the, the off to the side and out of the iron's reach. Now, first step is making the little triangles. And all I'm doing is folding them over and ironing them. So again, this will probably be one of those parts I just speed up. So through trial and error, I found out that the foil actually melts on this ribbon. So I'm using a scrap piece as a buffer cloth. Oh look, bonus kitty cat. All right, that's the longest part of the prep work. The last part is marking the ball for the centers. The easiest way I found was using a hair tie and trying to find the middle. 
It is just eyeballing it, but this part is kind of important to get right. If it's off a little bit, you will notice it at the end of making the ornament. Your one side will be, will be completely crooked. Which isn't the worst thing in the world because you do cover it by ribbon, but sometimes if the gap is too big, the ribbon doesn't cover it correctly. Like I said, it, you'll notice at the end, and I even do it in this video, it just is so difficult sometimes to cover if it's not straight here. Just a quick comparison to one I already started, just so you can see how we use those lines. All right, now we can finally get started. So using those lines, I put down my first piece. I try to get the center pin into the um, crosshairs, and then the sides actually don't follow it exactly, just because it is a, a round object. Um, so you will get some overlap. The main thing to worry about is that center line of your fold stays on your guidelines. All right, we finished all four, and this is where I'm testing to see what ribbon I wanna lay next. It's all up to you on how you like how it looks, and believe me, sometimes you have to take it all apart and redo it like I did here. All right, so we have all four sides down. The next steps is you're gonna be laying the next ribbon. The measurement, it's completely up to you again and how you like how it looks. I never do less than a eighth of an inch. Um, and the eighth of an inch is usually only when I'm doubling the pieces. The first pieces away are usually three eighths of an inch to one fourth. The max I normally go up to though is six eighths of an inch. And remember how I said you didn't have to be very OCD about the ribbon part cutting it? This is where the OCD for me comes in. I make sure I have that slide ruler there and I'm measuring each time and it's on it. It really can, um, because it is so symmetrical, you can really tell this part if it's even off just a little bit. I don't know if you can tell here, but I am using a combination of those needles. The longest one is usually the first point because I want it to be the most secure. The um, shorter ones I usually use on the outer corners, unless they're just not grabbing, which sometimes they don't, so then I use the longer ones again. If it is grabbing really well, sometimes you can even double it up with the ribbon next to it so it's going through both layers or all four layers. Like It just depends on how well that needle's grabbing. I did notice with this ribbon, because it has the straight lines, it was really important that I lined it up with my original guidelines, otherwise it immediately showed that it was off. To the last layer, which is the same blue that I started with, kind of rounds it out.
as I put the last few pins on this side. Of course, you have repeated on the other side. I just already did it for the video's sake. This is where I'm placing the decorative pins. They're a little hard to get in. Sometimes you have to kind of wiggle them since they don't have a point, but usually it's not too hard. This is also where you need to be kind of precise. You can tell right away if they're off by the smidge just a bit. But it really does add a lot, a pretty, really pretty decorative touch, so I really like to add these. And now I'm just going to clean up the edges a little, your stray strings and such, before we add the outer, the outer ribbon. So to measure it, I usually just stick in a T-pin and wrap it around. I give myself a little extra. I do try to pull a little snug. Um, you don't want it bubbling out, but a little overlap is okay. Once I have my length, I cut two of the wider ones at the same size, and then I cut that smaller one, which will be the one that it actually hangs from about eight inches. Again, secure it with a T-pin. And this is going to take a little bit of futzing, and I do a lot with this one. The main reason why is I don't like it when it's completely as wide on some of them. It just bubbles too much, has too much overlap. But with this one, when I tried to fold it in half, because it wasn't perfectly even, there were parts that showed and I could not get them secure. So I did have to go with the wider part. I think I tried three fourths here. And again, there's a part that just do doesn't get covered. And you see I'm trying to tuck them and it's showing on the other side and everything else. So I end up going with the full width. There's going to be a lot of futz in, pulling it taunt. Um, always secure with that T-pin first. It keeps it nice and snug. And then as I go, I put in the smaller ones. Smoothing as I go. So much smoothing and futzing and smoothing and futzing. Believe me, I edited it out probably 15 to 20 minutes of this. So we got to the end, and we kind of just tuck it under, and we're going to pin it down. So, so it's not seen, I usually pin it under the top layer, in between them. No, it's not seen at all. All right, we're to the point where we add now the outer ribbon. This one, I think, isn't as hard. One, you can fold it in half so it's not as wide. And it's just kind of more of a decorative element, truthfully. The bottom one is the one that covered all your flaws and mishaps. Another T pin to hold it down. And then here I was just trying to make sure I got it in the middle. Now we're to the point of putting the ribbon that hangs it on the actual tree. I normally secure this with that initial um, T-pin we put on the decorative part, but I must have gotten, so we're just going to add another one. And you do want to use the T-pin here, you want it to be quite secure. This is the ribbon that actually hangs it on the tree. I've had some of these ornaments on my tree for over 5 years, probably close to 10, and I've never had a problem with it just using it this way. Though I did recently make some for my nieces, and when they use it like a paddle ball, it doesn't hold up. So this is an ornament, it's not a toy. 
Leave it to kids to teach you things you didn't think about. So what I'm doing here is I'm going between the two layers. Remember the outer ribbon was folded in half. I'm going between the two layers and I'm pinning that ribbon down. It also provides extra support to the ribbon underneath. Remember how it was kind of billowing out or not as secure um, because it is a curved spear. This adds just a little because it's a little bit wider. Nice thing is it secures a little more and then we get to cover it back up. So much futzing with this one, trimming edges, trying to get those edges pinned down under that ribbon because they just want to come out, and all of it because I wasn't quite lined up in the beginning when I started it. But here's a close-up of the final product. And a close-up of the other one that you saw me cutting pieces for and starting on just so you can see how many different options and ways you can make them i hope other people find this tutorial helpful i'd love to see what you guys make leave links in the comments hit subscribe and see you next time